ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we ponder and read through the book of Allah, the Quran, there are moments where we will find that there will be people Yom Al-Qiyamah on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, Yom Al-Fazr Al-Akbar, the day of the greatest calamity, that will be in a state of regret. They will be in a state of regret and sadness because of things that they did during this lifetime. Some will say, I wish I never took this one as a friend. Some will say, I wish I was dust. Some will say, I, never, I wish I never associated partners with Allah. These are reminders of the consequences of deviating from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deviating from the path of Islam. So question yourself, what can I do, what must I do to not live a life that will lead me to have regret on the day of resurrection? Question yourself with this daily, with these things daily. Allah's guidance and His mercy, especially through the Qur'an, can lead us to contentment in this life, to happiness in this life, but even more so to contentment and happiness in the next life without regret, Yom al Qiyamah. So let us look at some of these ayat that Allah sent down, warning that this could be your consequence, consequence of regret, Yom al Qiyamah, if you do such a thing. Allah SWT says, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي Allah SWT, He says what means that he will say, mankind will say, alas, I wish, would I had set, I would, would that I had sent forth good deeds for this, for my life. Look at what Allah warned us of. He warned us in the Quran, Kullu nafsin to know that every soul will taste death and there's no running away from it. And the reminder was clear, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah, وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْرِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah warned us. He gave us advice, O oh, you who believe. And when Allah begins those ayat, those who want to be believers should be all ears. Paying full attention, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah. The first thing you must have so that you keep your duty to Allah and let every person look to what He has sent forth for tomorrow. Let every person look, think, reflect about what they will take to the table if tomorrow was the day of judgment and Allah was to question them. And again, Allah said, and fear Allah. Coming back to this fear in order for you to keep your duty to Him, to distance yourself between Allah's punishment 
and to put a, a barrier between yourself and Allah's punishment. Verily, Allah's all aware of what you used to do. We don't want to be in that situation, Yom al Qiyamah, where we're saying, I wish I did good deeds, I wish I did the good deeds, when they're plentiful in front of our eyes every single day of our lives. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا نُكَلِّفُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah says, what means, but those who believed in the oneness of Allah, those who were firm believers in Tawheed, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship alone without any partners in truth. And they worked righteousness, they did the righteous deeds, they did the good deeds so they could take them and meet Allah with them. We tax not any person beyond his scope. No one will be put, uh, will have a burden put on their shoulders greater than they could bear. Such are the dwellers of paradise. These will be the people of Jannah, and they will abide therein. So, a source of regret on the day of resurrection: not doing good deeds. So, don't fall into that trap. Number two, Allah said, "Inna anzalnaqum aladam qalida yom yanzur al-mar'u ma qaddamat yada wa yaqul al-kafir ya laytani kuntu turaba." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, means verily we have warned you of a near torment. The warning of the day of resurrection, its punishments for those who committed certain actions or crimes in this life. We have been warned of that. The day when man will see that, the deeds which his hands have sent forth, and the disbeliever will say, woe to me, would that I were dust. I wish that I was dust and would not be here now, facing the reality that I was promised, but I denied it. I wish that I was dust and not here to take this punishment that is about to be sent upon me. عن عبي بن حاتم رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما منكم أحد إلا سيكلمه ربه ليس بينه وبينه ترجمان فينظر أين أيمن منه فلا يرى إلا ما قدم من عمله وينظر أش أشأم منه فلا يرى إلا ما قدم وينظر بين يديه فلا يرى إلا النار تلقاء وجهه فاتقوا فاتقوا النار ولو بشق تمرة وفي رواية ولو بكلمة طيبة. This hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Abi ibn Hatim, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, There will be none amongst you, but his Lord will talk to him. But his Lord will talk to him. And there's going to be no interpreter between you and your Lord. Allah does not need that. You do not need that on that day. There will be no interpreter. He will look to his right and see nothing but his deeds. He will look to his left and see nothing but his deeds. He will look forward in front of him but see nothing but his deeds that he sent forward. And and he will look in front of him and see nothing but the hellfire facing him. So the Prophet said, So save yourself from the hellfire, even with half of a date, giving in charity. And in one narration it says, even with a good word, by saying a good word to somebody or to something, or by praising or extolling your Lord. And this hadith is in Bukhari. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, those deeds will come on the day of resurrection with you, and they will be weighed, the good and the bad. Let us not be of those who wish we were dust on that day because of the deeds we sent forth on that day. Allah, He said, مَنْ عَمَلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا ثُمَّ فَعَلَيْهَا وَمَا رَبَّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Allah says, what means, whoever does a good deed, whoever does good, then they will reap the reward of it. They will see it. And whoever does an evil, then it will be against him or her. And your Lord does not oppress or wrong any of His servants. Allah says, يَوْمَئِذِينَ يَصْطُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ لِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهْ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ لِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهْ That day mankind will proceed in scattered groups, that they may be shown their deeds. So whoever does an atom's weight of good, and uh, the, the, the weight of a small ant, any bit of good you see, you have done, you will see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil or sin, then they will see it. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, live your life in a way to not have that regret on the Day of Judgment, wishing you were dust because of the deeds you sent forth, the good and the bad. Allah mentions another source of regret on the Day of Resurrection. 
regret for the people. He said, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, what means if you could but see when they will be held over the hellfire, they will say, would that we were sent back to this world. Would that we were sent back so we could believe, so we could worship Allah alone with our partners, so we could establish our prayers, so we could pay our zakat, so we could give in charity, so we could fast for our Lord's pleasure, so we could make hajj to His house, so we could do good deed upon good deed. Would that we would have that chance again and we could go back. But there ain't no going back. There ain't no going back at that point. This is why these are all reminders, warnings for us to reflect upon. If you could but see when they will be held over the hellfire, they will say, would that we were sent back to the world. Then we will not deny the ayat of Allah, of our Lord. We will not deny His proofs, His signs, His evidences, His verses, His lessons. And we will be of the believers. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when you reach that point, there's no going back. And all the proof that we need, all the signs and evidences Allah has given us. Which of the favors, which of the blessings, which of the signs of your Lord do you deny? Daily from you waking up and seeing your body move and your eyes blink and your tongue wiggle and your hands move and your feet walk. These are signs for you to reflect upon. The night and the day revolving around one another. The years passing, the days getting longer in the summer and shorter in the winter, but the night it's increasing in length in the winter and decreasing in the summer. These are signs for you to reflect upon. Do not deny those signs and say on a day where you can't come back, I wish I believed in those signs and took them. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ هَلْ يُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says what means those who deny our ayat. Allah says those who deny our signs and our lessons, our proofs and our evidences, our revelation. And they deny the meeting with me in the hereafter on the day of resurrection. Vain are their deeds. All the good they came with don't mean nothing. The good deeds could have been more plentiful than that of the believer. It won't mean nothing. Mountains of good deeds, piles of good deeds will be dust. They will be in vain. They will have no fruit. They will be useless to you. If you did not believe and you denied the signs of Allah and the evidences of Allah, the lessons of Allah, the revelation of Allah, and you denied the meeting with Allah in the hereafter, do they expect to be rewarded with anything except what they used to do? This will be where it gets weighed out and laid out. Do you think you'll be rewarded except with what you used to do? Or punished if with except what you used to put forth and what you used to do? فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَلِبًا أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ Allah says what means, so who does more wrong to themselves? Who wrongs themselves more than one who forges a lie against Allah? Or denies even one ayah of Allah? Or denies even one haraka, one vowel of the book of, of Allah, of the speech of Allah? The proofs of Allah, His lessons and His verses. Surely the mujrimun, the criminals, the sinners, the disbelievers, the politicians, they will never be successful. They will not achieve any success. Because their main thing was denying the ayat of Allah, the signs and the proofs and the evidences of Allah. Do not let this be you. Or any of your loved ones. Work hard and strive hard to fight off and fend off shaitan. So you do not have this regret under the resurrection saying, I wish I could go back. Then I would do the good that I should have done. Then Allah says, He mentions, وَأُحِيْتَ بِثَمَنِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ قَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّ أَحَدًا Allah says what means in Surah Al-Kahf about the man in the parable and we'll explain it shortly. The man who said, so his fruits became to ruin. This was a man who was given two gardens of, of, of grape vines growing on trellises with a river gushing in between and it was surrounded by date palms. But you'll see what he did to ruin that all. So his fruits were encircled with ruin and he remained clasping his hands with sorrow over what he had spent on it. 
while it was all destroyed on the trellises, and all he could say, I wish that I did not ascribe partners with my Lord. I wish that I had not ascribed partners with Allah. And we have those who belittle shirk. Why? Because their culture is more important than their deen. I'm waking myself and you up to this sad reality that we're in where our culture has trumped our deen. To the point that we're committing shift in our homes, in our cars, in our daily lives. And this could be our situation, Yom al where we say, I wish that I did not associate partners with Allah. What happened with this man? وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصَرُونَهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مُنْقَصِرًا He had no groups when he fell into that room. No group of men to help him against Allah, nor could he defend or save himself. هُنَالَكَ الْوَلَايَةَ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ عُقُبًا There on that day of resurrection, the resurrection, الْوَلَايَة The protection, the power, the authority, the kingdom belongs to Allah and will only be for Allah alone. The one truly worthy of worship. He alone is the best of, to reward and the best for the final end. So why did all of this happen when he was given all of this? It's because he grew proud, he grew arrogant. He had too much pride, too much arrogance. He said to his companion, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَعَزُّ نَفَرًا وَعَزُّ نَفَرًا And he had property and fruit. He had been given these gardens of grapes with the river gushing before it and in between it and the palms surrounding it. And he said to his companion while talking to him in mutual talk, I am more than wealth than you. I'm more in wealth than you and more stronger in respect of men. And he entered his gardens and he was wronging his own self. He said, he went into his garden with that pride and arrogance saying, I think that this will never perish. He said, and I think that the hour will never be established, that the time will end. But if indeed I were brought back to my Lord on the day of resurrection, I would surely find better than this when I return to him. This was the situation. His pride, his arrogance made him exclaim or deny the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Made him deny it. Puffed himself up with pride and arrogance like Iblis did when he denied the sajda that Allah commanded him to make to Adam. And this was the course of his destruction. So do not let pride or arrogance push you to shirk that you don't even see. Because you've, in your eyes, become someone so high and mighty in this life. That you deny the meaning of Allah and you deny that He is greater than you. Allah mentions another source of regret, Yom al Qiyamah. He says, Yom wujuhum fil nar, yaquluna ya laytana ata'na Allah wa ata'na rasula. Another source of regret on the day of resurrection we find in this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says what means and they will say, Our Lord rarely, they will say, on that day when their faces will be turned over in the fire and they will say, Oh, would that I had obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu Imagine you're a Muslim. You say the shahada. You're coming and making the prayers. You're fasting the days that are obligatory to fast and maybe recommended. You're paying your charity. But you can still come on that day saying that... I wish that I had obeyed Allah and obeyed His Messenger Because many of us, although we claim our Islam, are we at the level of Iman, are we at the level of being believers? Many of us do not obey Allah or His Messenger And I advise myself first. We're not talking about errors or weaknesses, we're talking about outright just chasing the dunya, chasing your desires, chasing what you're being called to by shaitan. As we mentioned in the last couple of weeks, on that day when their faces will be turned over in the fire, I wish I had obeyed Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May you seek refuge with Allah from being in this situation. وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَقُبْرَاءَنَا فَأَضَلُّونَا السَّبِيلَ فَأَضَلُّونَا السَّبِيلَ And they will say, Our Lord, verily we obeyed our chiefs, we obeyed the great ones around us, and they misled us from the right way. 
But that's going to be no excuse for you on that day to blame where you lived or who your parents were even or who your friends were or what society was doing and making normal. That's not something you're going to be able to refer to if you denied Allah and you denied His Messenger وسلم. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Allah says in the Quran what means and the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, will say, O oh my Lord, verily my people, they deserted this Quran. This was a message, clear proofs for guidance in this Quran, clear proofs for what is right and wrong, clear proofs that it will never be tainted and it hasn't been tainted being memorized across the world. And yet you have those who abandon it and put it to the side and instead follow the magazines and the entertainments and the this and the that of what they find in the studio to bring them pleasure, to bring them satisfaction, to bring them happiness in their heart. It's pseudo-happiness. It's false. Wake up and smell the coffee when the death comes to you and ain't no more. So be mindful of this. This Qur'an, you do not want to be in that group where you're referred to by the Prophet ﷺ being those who abandon this Qur'an, not listening to it, not acting upon its laws or orders. Allah, He says, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah says what means, and whoever, whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger وسلم, These two, Ibn Abbas, عنهمان, He said, you can never split them up. So all those people nowadays who are becoming Qur'aniyun, those who say, I accept the Qur'an but I deny the Sunnah, or I can take that the Qur'an is authentic but I'm going to deny the Sunnah. They're fools. They are deceiving themselves. Shaitan got them wrapped around his little finger. Do not fall into that trap. The command came throughout the Qur'an. Allah saying, whoever obeys Allah, Whoever obeys his messenger, وسلم, then they will be in the company upon those whom bestowed, Allah bestowed their grace. You want to be with the prophets? You want to be with the first to believe Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum wa You want to be with the shuhada, the martyrs who died defending Islam at the time of the Prophet وسلم, and thereafter? You want to be with the righteous ones? The ticket is two things, obey Allah and obey His Messenger There ain't no other way to put it. There ain't no other prescription, there ain't no other solution. This is your prescription to success. To obey Allah and to obey His Messenger Allah said, وَمَنْ يُقِعْ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا Allah says what means, he who obeys the Messenger has obeyed Allah. For you to obey Allah, you have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. You have to follow his sunnah, pray as he prayed, fast as he fasted, do what he commanded to the best of your ability, stay away from what he prohibited. There's no separating these. Who will obey, he, he who obeys the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, has indeed obeyed Allah, but he who turns away, then we have not sent you, O Muhammad وسلم, as a watcher over them. Allah said, وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهَ وَيَتَّقِيهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Allah says what means, and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger وسلم, and fears Allah, and keeps his duty to Allah, such are the successful ones. May Allah make us, make us from them. أَقُولُ قَلِ هَذَا وَسَفْرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ إِذَا اللَّهَ يَخْرَ لَكُمْ دَلُوهُ Brothers, if you can move forward uh, to give some space for those coming in to pray to Rakhaz and say, Allah, Fiqh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'khiruhu wa nasta'hdihu 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 wa Regret for not having done good deeds they could have done. Regret for doing sins they did, not realizing that they would be weighed and they could be punished for them. Regret for not obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger them. Regret for worshipping other than Allah and I remind you of this shirk because so many of us have it in so many ways. 
these beliefs and these ta'wees and these talismans and these things like this and the, the worshiping the graves or making du'a to the Prophet وسلم, all these things are shirk. And you will be in that state if you commit shirk and you don't repent from it sincerely where you say, I wish that I did not ascribe progress to my Lord. The last one we're going to mention from the sources of regret on the day of resurrection that the people will be in وَيَوْمِ يَعْبُدُ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي أَتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَى لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخَذَ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدَ ضَلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدِ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خُضُولًا The last one we'll mention for today, the source of regret on the day of resurrection, and pay attention, because this applies to every single one of us, especially the youth, but even more so, we can even see amongst the adults. Allah, He said, remember what means, and remember the day when the ghanim, the one who did wrong, who oppressed, who was a polytheist, he will bite at his hand saying, I wish that I had taken a path with the Messenger Muhammad Wasallam. I wish that I followed his sunnah, followed his path, even if everyone rejected me, denounced me, came after me physically, verbally, mentally, whatever. I wish that I had taken the path of Muhammad And ah, uh, woe to me. Would that I had never taken so and so of a person as a friend. I should have never taken this person and this person as a friend. This person led me astray from the reminder. They led me astray from the reminder, yani this Qur'an. After it had come to me and shaitan is ever a deserter to a man in an hour of need. So when in that situation, Yom Al-Qiyamah, biting at your hands in a source, in, in a state of distress and sadness, saying, I wish I followed Prophet Muhammad I wish I never took this person as a friend. And you go, Shaitan, he's the one who called me to this. He's going to desert you. And then you won't be able to put any blame on him. The blame will only be on yourself. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الرجل على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالب رواه أبو داود وحسنه شيخ الأبلان رحمه الله This hadith which is Hassan in the sunnah of Abu Dawood the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said a man will follow the religion of his friend so each one of you should consider whom he befriends each one of you should be very careful to think of who you take as a friend Allah he said, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ فِي الْغَدَاتِ وَالْعِشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهًا وَلَا تَعْبُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةُ تُرِيدُ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبُهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرَقًا Allah says, what means, and keep yourself, O Muhammad Sallallahu patiently with those who call upon their Lord. Allah, instructing the Prophet Sallallahu for him to be in the company of those who remember Allah, to be in the company with those who remember Allah. And this was the one, the best of mankind, al uswat al-Hasana, the best example for all of mankind. And Allah is telling him to be careful, take companions who cause you to remember your Lord, or help you to remember your Lord. Keep with them patiently those who call on their Lord, your companions who remember Allah with glorification, and praising them and pray, praising Allah in prayers and doing other righteous deeds, morning and afternoon, seeking His face, and let not your eyes overlook them, desiring the pomp and the glitter of the life of this world, and obey not Him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance, one who follows His own lusts and whose affair or deeds have been lost. This was the command to the Prophet Sallallahu and to all of us. Take friends who remind you of Allah. Take friends who will not be afraid of you or timid of you. That you're putting on your left shoe foot and they'll say, Brother, reminder, reminder, the sunnah, put on your right shoe first. Put on your right garment first. One who sees you hungry, going in to eat, and they'll say, Ahi, remember to say Bismillah before you eat. One, when you're done, you're filled your tummy to its full, you're tired, you're lazy, and yet you remind you, remember to praise Allah. Say Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Atta'amana wa Safana wa min Muslimin. Praise Allah, one who reminds you to praise Allah after you've eaten the food you've eaten. This is a friend, this is a companion, one who reminds you of Allah, one who will tell you it's prayer time, and instead of you keeping on the games, or doing what you're doing, or watching your, your scrolling up your TikToks because of the entertainment there, they'll come and they'll grab you and say, Ehi, it's Salah time. We ain't gonna miss Salah, let's go, right now. 
And they'll encourage you to that. These are the friends and the companions you need to have. Abu al-Ahwas, he narrated that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, Remember Allah the Almighty often. You must not accompany anyone unless he helps you remember Allah the Almighty. Remember this. Now you may have some who are around you at times that may not be fully upon this. Then you are the one who has to be the friend to them. Bringing them closer to Allah, to the pleasure of Allah, to the reminder of Allah. The Qur'an, the Sunnah of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what then falls on your responsibility. But these are the good companions. These are the ones you need to befriend. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةَ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَا أَجُورَكُمْ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ اللَّهُ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسْ وَمَنْ حَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعَ الْغُرُورِ We'll end with this reminder, summarizing all of this. Not wanting to be of those who have regret Yom Al-Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, every soul will taste death. You're going to get to that end result, whether you like it or not. It's true. You will meet death. There is a life in the Banza. There is a day of resurrection. There is a scale that will weigh the deeds. There is a bridge, a sirat over the, the over Jahannam, over the hellfire. The mizan will weigh the good and the bad deeds and you will be questioned by your Lord without, a Lord without an interpreter. Every soul will taste death and only on the day of resurrection will you be paid in full for your wages. Whoever is removed from the fire and admitted into paradise, into Jannah, he indeed will be, she indeed will be the one who is successful. The life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception, a deceiving thing. So do not leave yourself in regret. Regret people will have, the regret people will have on that day of resurrection because of the denial of the promise of what Allah promised that they will be recompensed with what they used to do with what they used to believe with what they used to worship etc. So we ask Allah to make us of those who are obedient to Him who obey Allah and obey His Messenger Wasallam, and that He safeguards us from being of those who have regret Yom al Qiyamah and that He grants us from His shade on the day where there is no shade but His. اللهم اخفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات يا منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب الخلود ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين